Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. This is Matt Criscuolo coming to you up close and personal with some random thoughts and really just kind of wondering what you would do if you were me. Now, everybody has their life experiences in dealing with other human beings, business uh, associates, and whatnot. You know that things happen, people make mistakes, you make mistakes, the people you do business and enter into some kind of arrangements, sometimes they make mistakes. It happens, it happens, right? But obviously, you try to mitigate the risks of it happening again. So, for example, I know, and you probably have experienced this yourself, you bring your car to your mechanic, a mechanic, to fix one problem, and you get it back with another problem. It happens every time. Not once in a while, it happens every time. So obviously, when I bring my car, which I love, you know, you love your car probably, right? I love my car. So when I bring it to somebody, I very clearly and nicely, but very clearly say, hey, listen, by the way, let's do a walk around. The car doesn't have any scratches, doesn't have any dings. It's in great shape. I love my car. I, we're fixing A. I don't want it coming back with B. I want A to be fixed, and that's it. Can we do that? Oh, yeah, 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 sure. So now you have to depend on the experience, the sensitivity, the uh, mindfulness, the awareness of whoever you're doing business with. And a lot of the time, you kind of vet them and you figure, okay, now I don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. But inevitably, it still happens. For case in point, today, I had to bring my car to an upholstery place to fix the ceiling lining on my car because last week I brought my car to an, a detailer who attempted to clean it and it fell down. Now, it can happen because it's an older car and it's just a ceiling lining, right? But it wasn't just that. There were a handful of things that went wrong with this particular transaction. And I was very careful, again, when I brought the car to the guy. I tried not to hex myself. I just tried to be careful. So when I brought it to the first guy to detail the car, I said, okay, you know, please be careful. It's an older car. It's a 2007. Um, yeah, just be careful. I love my car. Go easy. He actually, when he was pulling off the plastic coating uh the, it's called ppf it's that protective bra coating on the front of the car it was maybe four or five years old when he went to go pull it off he actually ended up pull, pulling off the paint and the clear coat on the fender i had to get the fender painted he also did it on the other fender he apparently didn't learn his lesson on the other fender so he did it on the other fender as well he also um ruined the the lining of the of the and there was something else that he did oh yeah when he was buffing out and polishing the car he 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 burned because he probably pressed too hard with heat with his orbital uh, uh buffer he burned uh, uh one of the fender lines and i have to get that looked at and and put and paint it over again too it cost thousands of dollars to fix these problems now we ended up working out an arrangement, fine, but suffering, aggravation, the, the, the cost, the time, the energy, all that stuff, it's, in the, it's, it's ancient history, kinda, now. But I had to bring my car to an upholsterer today because I had to get that ceiling lining done, right? So I brought it to him and I told the guy, that the car is pretty much perfect, please be careful, I love my car, I'll do business with you forever if you could just, you know, be careful with it, okay? It was only there for six hours. I show up to pick up the car, okay? Okay, the ceiling lining came out great. For now. Fingers crossed. But um, there was the adhesive that they used to put that ceiling lining on, which is like the kind of glue you use on the bottom of a sole of a shoe. It's that yellow, really sticky stuff it's good glue it's like a contact cement it was on my door to the size of maybe you know eight inches squared you could see it a mile away fine 
I went up to the guy and I told the owner, listen, it's not a big deal. I, the car was detailed last week. It's got no swirl marks whatsoever right now. I basically dust the car to clean it. If you're gonna clean this glue off of it, I need you to please be very careful not to leave swirl marks. So whatever chemical or rag you use, you got, we, we're gonna be careful. I'm gonna watch you, but I don't wanna remove the ceramic coating on the car and I don't wanna have any swirl marks. I'm not asking for much, right? No problem, no problem, he said. So he went to go get one of his employees and I noticed he didn't say anything to the employee, nothing. He just said, you gotta clean the glue off. We have a saying in, a, in Neapolitan, in, in Napoli, it's, and this is the part where I struggle with because I'm pretty well read. I understand you know, what it's like to be on a path to enlightenment, to be a less stressed person, to be happier, to love and let live and, uh, and, and all that stuff. I, I understand to a large, I did therapy for a few years. I understand you know, intellectually and practically what kind of things to do to be a better person. But the Italian saying that popped into my mind, and maybe this is because I was ingrained from my father and my upbringing, was grazio gats, grazio gats, which basically means thanks for nothing. So I had to tell the guy, by the way, the same thing. I told him the same thing, please. I told him exactly the same thing, not in a dicky way, just in a very clear, articulate, and uh, in a way to let the guy understand my intentions of, uh, and what I wanted and what I, and I love the car and that it ba ba ba. You know what happened. I don't have to tell you what happened, okay? I don't have to tell you what happened. Swirl marks on the whole friggin' thing. And in my head, I'm thinking, okay. Now now I get, I, I get into the car just to inspect one more time. I had the wherewithal and the, the, uh, the foresight uh, to, before I drop my car off, okay, I don't expect props for this, but I remove my house keys and anything. And I even go through the glove box and I take out anything that's got any personal information on it. I, want, I don't want anybody coming over to my house in the middle of the night and unlocking my garage and stealing my car. So I take off, I try to mitigate my risks as much as possible. I really do, because I have to try that hard because for some reason, you know, I doubt myself sometimes, but these are the kind of precautions I do because of that fear of getting having suffering. We're always trying to minimize our suffering, right? Anyway, the guy leaves swirl marks all over my car. Grazio gats. I could have done it myself. And by the way, that's another reason why I know how to do a lot of things on my own. Electrical, plumbing, carpentry, car work, you name it. I, I'm, I know enough to be dangerous. And quite honestly, I, I, I have to fix a lot of people's mistakes and I'm better off doing it myself to begin with. And you know what? If when you make a mistake, you own your own mistake and it's, it seems to be easier to get mad at yourself than someone else for screwing something up. But anyway, I get back into my car and I notice that the cigarette, um, that the uh, car charger wire is missing. Uh, what is it, $10? $10? But it's $10 on top of every other $10 that you go out to buy a replacement wire, which if you're anything like me, it almost seems like it happens on a regular basis. Where do these wires go? I'll tell you where they go. They, one of them ended up at my upholsterer today. That I can tell you for sure. Because I, I said to him, I said, listen, when I brought the car off, when I dropped the car off, I left the wire here. The cigarette charger thing is still in the lighter. And there was a little chrome ring about that big that was also in the ashtray where the lighter uh, cigarette lighter socket is but it was loose it was in the cigarette ashtray loose somebody was having fun and they took that little chrome bezel it was a part of my dashboard and they removed the cigarette lighter and they put it in they put the cigarette they put it through this so I know that somebody there f did that probably some little kid that I saw walking around kids kids right but the kid was there so i said to the guy i said look i i would like to have my my wire back because i don't want to have to go out and drop another 10 bucks on top of what i just paid you it's not necessary and it certainly isn't what i signed up for 
I said it pretty much just like that. I was just finding that. Oh, let me go look, see if I could find it. He went to go look, there was nothing. So now I'm thinking to myself, there's a part of me that very often, the way I handle these kinds of things is I would say, I'm not leaving here until you fix the swirl marks and until you give me us a wire. I don't care where you get it. You're gonna make it. You can wind it yourself. I don't care. You can go to Apple and come back. I don't really care, but I'm not leaving. There was a part of me that wanted to do that. Then I said to myself, you know, maybe maybe I should just let it go. I can I can choose this battle. I don't have to die on this hill, but I'm not going to I'm not going to lie. It bothered me because this is a symptom of this is a an example of the kind of things that happen to me on a regular basis. Now, at my age, at 51, now granted I know that's not that old. I know there's a lot of you that are older than I am. I'm not trying to say, "Oh, I'm 51. I know everything now." But hey, look, this is the oldest I've ever been. And I've got my own experiences at 51. And you know, no matter what your age is, you learn from repetition what you got to do and not do so i i am so careful when i do business with people i ask all the right questions and i even ask that question to the person i'm doing business with is there something that i forgot to ask you that i should be asking you that's how thorough i am i am very careful i've been in business with several businesses for 30 over 30 years many different types of things Fortunately, I have some experiences, but I don't care to keep reliving the bad things that happen. So I try to be very careful with the people I do business with. But I find that no matter how careful I am, no matter how diligent I am, that it's th these mistakes happen because you're, you're depending on other people to have a certain level of mindfulness, awareness, experience, care, and knowledge, whatever, to execute. But then what ends up happening is I end up losing money, time, I get aggravated, and, uh, and I've come to the point where I'm kind of throwing my hands up in the air and saying, you know what, this must just be the way it is. And it's probably never gonna go away until the day I die, or maybe until the day that I retire and I have no moving parts in my life. Um, but I don't think that's ever gonna happen. I think that I think that maybe that will be on my deathbed when I'm making, when I'm taking my last breath. And I hate to sound negative. I, I know I have that little voice in my head that says, hey Matt, don't be negative, stay positive, stay positive. But I have a sneaking suspicion when I'm 101 years old that the last, one of the last things that I'm, that's gonna go through my mind is, well, at least I won't have to deal with that bullshit anymore.